Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the Corona Render Only Mask option and the C Masking Render element. This render element can help us to select different objects in our scene and quickly render masks to be used in post-processing software like Photoshop, After Effects, or Fusion. This can save us a lot of time if we need to do specific adjustments to any of these elements after we finish our rendering. As we are only rendering masks, we're going to start by opening the render setup and go to the scene tab. Then on the render override section, check the render only mask option. This is going to speed up the mask rendering by disabling any render elements that depends on the beauty pass, like light mids, reflection, or refraction. It is also important to change the pass limit to avoid having an infinite number of passes. I recommend five to 10 passes. Most of the time, after 10 passes, there is not much of a difference in the render of the mask but we can go higher if we need a cleaner mask. After this, go to the Render Elements tab, click the Add button and select the C Masking Mask. We have two different mask modes, monochromatic and RGB. Each of these modes have three different types of selections, object, material, and manual selection. For the first one, we're going to enable Object GBuff ID and change the default value to one. Then select the object you want to create the mask. Press the right click button and select Object Properties. In the Object ID section, change it to 1 and press the Render button. We can see that the Beauty Pass has a warning that the shading has been disabled. And if we select the mask, we have a black and white mask of the selected object. We're going to check the Material GBuff ID and change the value to 2. Then, in the Material Editor, select the material you want to add as a mask and change the material ID channel to 2. This is going to render a mask of all the objects with that material assigned. And the last is the manual selection. We can use the exclude include list or press the plus button to add objects manually. This option is really useful if we don't have an ID organization for our objects or materials and we want to quickly add masks for different elements. It is also possible to select more than one option at the same time but I don't recommend this. It can get messy really fast. As this is a monochromatic mask, it is really easy to use in any post-processing software. In Photoshop, we need to load the mask in our project. Move the layer to the top of the stack and go to the channel tab. We need to control click any of the layers to select the white area. Then in the layer tab, we're going to add a new adjustment layer or a new mask layer. You can see that the mask is added automatically using our selected area. After this, we can modify anything from colors to saturation or brightness. Even though this is a good option for a couple of objects, the one I recommend is the RGB mode. It offers more flexibility and we can have three different objects in one mask. Back in 3ds Max, we're going to change the mode of our render element to RGB. For the R channel, we're going to select the object ID 1 and press Render. We can see that we have now a red mask for the selected object. For the G channel, we're going to change the material G buffer ID to 2 and press Render. Now, we also have the objects with the green mask added. The last one is the B channel. For this, we're going to use manual selection and select the floor. After this, we can see that our mask is complete. We have three objects, each with a different color. For this example, I use the three different selection types, but most of the time you're going to use one or two. Don't forget to change the name of your mask with the object you're adding. This can help us to have a better organization. Using this mask in our post-processing file is similar to the monochromatic mask. We're going to start by opening the mask in our Photoshop file and move the layer to the top. Then go to the channel tab. Here, we're going to see that we have a black and white mask for each of the RGB channels. We can control click any of these channels to select the white area. And back to the layer tab, we need to add a new adjustment layer or layer mask. It is also possible to add masks to folders. This will allow us to control multiple adjustments with only one mask. Using masks correctly in post-processing can help us to enhance the look of our images, change colors, or do any type of adjustments like saturation or level. This is especially useful when we need to do quick revision to the project or modify only some objects. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.